Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to lesson four. If you have been following the course three, you're now getting a really strong sense of Latin grammar. You've got an understanding of how verbs function, and we've begun to explore the idea of nouns. The key difference between Latin and English, of course, is that word order in English is really, really important. If I start jumbling up the order of the words I'm using, you're already going to under struggle to understand what I'm saying. In Latin, because of the use of inflection, which means the way we change the endings of nouns and verbs and other uh, parts of speech, that word order is less important, which means we've really got to understand why those endings of words are changing so that we can identify what's going on in the sentence. If you recall, last week, we spent our time looking in detail at two cases. Now, cases, as I think I explained, are a property of nouns. A bit like verbs have tenses, they have person, uh, they have number. Nouns also have properties. And an important one is case. And it's so important because it tells you what that word is doing in the sentence. And we looked at two really important cases last week, the nominative case which is the case uh, which belongs to the subject, that's the thing doing the action, and then the accusative case, which belongs to the object, that's the thing having the action done to it. We also explored the fact that our nouns have different flavours, a bit like the crisps with the verbs. Well, nouns we use soft drinks for, so Fanta uh, is our first declension noun set. It's everywhere, it's easily accessible, it is the best drink, I think um, we were all agreed on that, nobody's come back at me, so uh, there we are. Uh, we talked about um, second declension nouns like Diet Coke, difficult to get in Europe, but you know we, we're okay with that, and then Lilt, um, which you know some like it, some don't for the third declension. So those families go together, but they still do the same things. They just have slightly different endings on their uh, nouns. So we discovered that for girl, the Latin word for girl is puella. And when it becomes accusative, so when it's having an action done to it, it becomes puellam. Similarly with Marcus, Marcus becomes Marcum and Canis becomes Canem. So what we're seeing happening here is that uh, an M really is being added. And it's really important. I, I put the, the picture of the monkey up last week just to remind us uh, that sort of accusatory M which belongs with the uh, singular forms of the, uh, of the of the nouns when they go into the accusative. So nominative, doing the action, accusative, having the action done to it. And it's usually got an M involved. So if we look at this sentence here, Marcus canem necat, now in Latin, because words can go in any kind of order, we might be confused and think, well, is, is that the dog killing Marcus? Is it Marcus killing the dog? What's what's going on here? Well, actually, because of that M ending on canem, we know it's in the accusative, it can't be doing the action. So therefore, it has to be Marcus kills the dog, is the translation of that sentence. If we wanted it the other way around, we'd have to change the ending of Marcus to Marcum to put him in the accusative Marcum canis necat. So look at how those two uh, sentences, Marcus kills the dog and the dog kills Marcus, have the verbs, sorry, has the order of words exactly the same, but just a subtle change in the ending, which completely changes the meaning. Marcus comes to a sticky end in one of them and the dog comes to a sticky end in another. We then looked at how puella operates in the same way. So puella canem necat and puellam canis necat. Again, look, the word order is exactly the same, but the meaning is entirely different. The first of those sentences means puella kills, sorry, the girl kills the dog. The second, the dog kills the girl. Then we had a quick look at plurals. So obviously you can have one girl, but you can also have more than uh, one noun on the go at any uh, given time. So puella becomes puellas in the accusative plural or puella in the nominative. Marcus becomes marki in the plural. If you were in a situation where you had more than one mark uh, around, which, you know, Mark's a kind of useful guy. I guess it's a, a key thing. Uh, and then marcos. Uh, canes and canes, uh, which is pretty unhelpful in the plural for dog. So we looked at all those things together um, and we started to, to sort of pull those into the sentences here. So Marcus canes necat uh, is Marcus kills the dogs. Uh, we can see we've got that plural there. Have a look at this example and see if you can work it out. Just pause the video, give it a go. OK, hopefully you came up with the translation Marcus kills the girls. It can't be the girls killing Marcus because they're in the accusative. Uh, so then having the action done to them and Marcus is in the nominative. Also, it can't be the girls killing Marcus because we'd have to change the verb. The verb is in the third person singular, necat. If it was more than one person doing this, the killing, we'd have to change that to necant. So Latin is really good. It gives you lots of different ways of working out whether you've got the right translation. And always looking at that verb first is a very, very good idea.
OK, so into the new learning for today, we're going to look at something called the vocative case. Now, the vocative case is not actually that regularly used in Latin, but it's an important and easy one to learn. And vocative uh, forms are used for direct address. So if instead of saying the girl killed the dogs, you wanted to talk to the girl directly and say, oh, girl, Marcus is killing the dog uh, or something along those lines, you have to use a different form for that. So that form where you're saying, oh, girl, this is happening or oh, Marcus, this is happening or oh, dog, you're about to be killed by a Roman but I don't know why these examples are so dark I'm sorry about that but then that's the way it goes um so all we have to do here is insert a new case so we've met our nominative we've met our accusative and in the list of case learning we actually slide in um another form here the good news is is that it's almost exactly the same as the nominative in every respect so Puella stays as Puella that's nice and easy so oh Puella oh girl is the same as Puella the girl really really easy same for dog, carnis and carnis. It's only our second declension nouns, our diet coke nouns, uh, where things change a little bit. So if the noun has its root in us, it ends in that us ending, uh, Marcus, it becomes Marque. So Marcus becomes Marque. O Marque, uh, Puella, Carnem, Necat. So O Marcus, the girl is killing the dog. Right. So that's how that would work. Let's take a quick look at the plurals. And the good news about that is they are really really easy because they are exactly the same as the nominatives. So the only real thing we need to get into our head about the vocative is that it exists. There's a possibility that you might need to translate something as if someone is talking directly to a, a person or a thing. Um, and that in the second declension, in the Diet Coke declension, uh, it becomes marque, you know, E ending in the singular form. But all the plurals are exactly the same as the nominative. So we don't really usually learn it as a separate case. We just keep that exception uh, in the back of our mind. So we've now met three cases. They're really, really important. Let's have a look at some examples with the vocative and see how we do. Omarque puelai canem necant. Have a really careful look at this. Remember what I said about going for the verb first and then come back. OK, so hopefully you worked out that Marcus is in the vocative. So we're talking to Marcus. So the sentence begins, oh, Marcus. Uh, then we've got puellae. Uh, and the brave among you will have skipped to the verb at the end of the sentence and seen that it's a third person plural, which means they are killing. So if we connect that with puellae, it means the girls are killing. And then canem there is an accusative singular, the dog. So, oh, Marcus, the girls are killing the dog. Let's try this one. Marcus puellas necat o canis. Okay, Marcus Puelas Necat Olcanis. Take a moment, give it a go, see how you do. So hopefully from this you saw that Marcus was in the nominative and Puelas is the accusative plural. We're looking at the verb there, we know it must be a third person singular and it collects with our nominative, so it means Marcus kills. Uh, we've got our accusative. Marcus kills the girls, which leaves Olcanis there in the vocative, O dogs. Marcus is killing the girls. Oh, dogs. I can't imagine a situation in which you want to tell your dog that this was happening and not sort of go to the aid of these poor girls who are being killed. Uh, but uh, it, it seemed to fit the grammar. So we'll, 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 we'll live with it. O puelai, canes marcum necant. Let's uh, give uh, Marcus a bit of um, a bit, bit of sort of um, revenge here from the girls, perhaps. O puelai then. O puelai, just have a think about that, is in which case it's the vocative O oh, girls. Canes, which case for canes? Well, it's tricky. It could be the um, accusative plural, or it could be the nominative plural. But we know we've already got an accusative in the sentence if we look at marcum. So it's not going to be our accusative. It's very unlikely. Uh, and nakand at the end says it's plural there. So it's going to be, oh, girls, the dogs are killing Marcus. Not a good day uh, for dogs. Then always called Marcus in general, I think, uh, in this situation. OK. So that was easy, the, the vocative case, puella marque canes, puella marque canes, really easy endings. Um, and it's really obvious from the sentence, it often has an O in it, or it's often separated by a comma. It's really clear to see that you're looking at the vocative case. Slightly more difficult, but actually really, really easy to translate is the genitive case. And that's our second case today. I know last week I said we're going to look at the dative. I lied. I lied. I, I thought about doing it. And then I decided, actually, it would be much better um, to stick with uh, the genitive this week because it just breaks you in more easily to the idea of how a case operates. The genitive, um, I like to think of it as the genitov case, because basically, if you see a genitive ending on a noun, it translates with the word of. So puelai down there, Marki and Carnis, uh, they all translate as of the girl, of Marcus, and of the dog. 
Now, the eagle eyed among you will have spotted that some of these endings are duplicated. That is, they appear in different um, in different contexts. So puellae um, could also be the nominative uh, or vocative plural of girls. We really just have to look at the context of the sentence and see what the verb is doing. It's usually easy to work out. So puellae would mean of the girl, marki of Marcus and carnis of the dog. Similarly, in the plurals, and these are really easy to spot, puellarum, it's a really strange ending, arum and aurum, they're really, really obvious. So puellarum means of the girls, marcorum means of the Marcuses, um, if you had more than one Marcus uh, lounging about and they, they own something, then I guess that's there. And then carnum, which is slightly annoying because it looks like an accusative ending, but it isn't. So we have to be a bit careful of that. Now, carnis is slightly annoying when it comes to the genitive because it, its nominative form ends in an is. But there are other lilty nouns um, which we can involve, uh, which, which show the pattern a little bit more clearly. So if we add the word in for king here, it's another lilty third declension noun. Rex, rex, very straightforward. So rex in the nominative, rex in the vocative, regem in the accusative, and then regis in the genitive. If you ever heard of a place called Beer Regis, Bognor Regis, places like that, they mean of the king. Uh, Beer Regis means literally beach of the king. Um, so that's that's why it, it is what it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, so rex for the nominative, rex for the vocative, regem for the accusative, and then regis for the genitive. We move into the plurals, regays, regays, regays. Um, sounds like some kind of spicy sauce. And then in the genitive form, it's regum. There, regaze, 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 regum. And you can see why I've put this example up. It's to show you that because dog, carnis, ends in an is in its kind of form that you find it in in the wild, it's harder to see that that genitive is ending has been added to it. Whereas with rex, we see it get glued on at the end there. Okay, let's try a few examples. Opuelai, Marcus canem regum necat. What I've done there is to put in for you the different case labels, so you should be able to work out what's going on. Pause the video, see if you can translate, and then come back. Okay, hopefully with that one, whoops, hopefully with that one, um, let's go back. You worked it out quite quickly. Opuelai is vocative, so oh girls, Marcus is doing the action, he's the nominative. Marcus, Nekat, is killing Kanem, the accusative, so killing the dog, and then Regum of the king. So that's how the genitive's operating. Oh, girls, Marcus is killing the dog of the king. What we're going to get you to do now in this next example is to translate from English into Latin. If we do it that way around, you'll get a sense of which cases you should be using. So look at it very carefully and try to work out what would happen in the Latin. OK, well, hopefully you worked out that Marcus would need to be in the vocative. The king would need to be in the nominative. Is killing is a third person singular verb. The girl's dogs, it's not just one girl, uh, more than one girl. So we're going to need a genitive plural for the girls. And then the dogs um, go in uh, are also plural, but they're being the accusative. So here we go. Omarque rex canes puellarum necat. We can see omarque in the vocative, rex in the nominative, canes in the accusative, puellarum in the genitive plural, uh, and then necat for the verb. OK, well done. Let's try another exercise here. Again, pause the video. Give it a go. OK. Oh, King, the girls are killing Marcus's dog. Well, we're going to need a vocative for the king. The girls are going to need to be our subject of the sentence. So they'll go into the nominative case, but they're going to need to be plural. Our killing is our verb, which is going to need to be third person plural to match with the girls. So it's going to be a plural verb. It's going to have an ant ending on it. And then Marcus dog. So it's the dog of Marcus. So it's going to be the genitive case for him. Uh, and then the dog is, of course, the thing being killed. So it's going to need to go into the accusative. So orex, puellae canem marki necat. Now, this is where um, your Latin teacher can often slip up because what I've done here, of course, is forgotten my example that I've given you plurals. So if you look very carefully, you'll see it should actually be orex, puellae canem marki necant. OK, but uh, this one there, as I've written, it says, oh, king, the girl is killing Marcus's dog. But yes, you need a plural um, to translate that properly. OK, so our Roman history continues. Last week, um, we found ourselves in the odd position that Julius Caesar had died and a power vacuum had been created in Rome. And it wasn't really very easy uh, for people to uh, understand who was going to rule them. It wasn't easy for somebody to come to the fore. Everybody had expected that Caesar would pass his power to a guy called Mark Antony. But Mark Antony uh, had um, had been sort of looked over in Caesar's will in favour of the young Octavian. Um, 
there was a problem, of course, which was that Mark Antony suddenly decided that he wanted to rule the province of Cisalpine Gaul. The reason he wants to go there, it's northern Italy, it's very, very fertile. It's also um, a really, really um, rich place. He's going to get very, very wealthy uh, going up there. So he takes his army up there and he besieges the existing governor. So we've got Roman on Roman war happening here. The, the existing governor is Decimus Brutus and Mark Antony is trying to take it over from him. Now, the Roman Senate get very, very upset and annoyed about this, but they don't know quite what to do. Ultimately, it's Cicero who comes up with the bright idea of giving Octavian, the person that Caesar had said should be his heir, an army to go and get rid of Mark Antony. So they give um, Octavian this army. They send the two consuls. They're the two kind of presidents of the Roman state, Hirtius and Pansa, uh, with him. And off they go to Cisalpine Gaul um, to help out poor Decimus Brutus, who's being besieged by Mark Antony. This all goes um, extremely well. Um, uh, for Octavian. Uh, Mark Antony is forced to flee. He runs away uh, from the battle, uh, Battle of Mutina, it's known as. Um, he goes and hides out in Spain. And um, uh, Octavian is victorious, and Decimus Brutus is given his province back. And the Roman Senate very happy, and they write a letter uh, to, uh, to Octavian and say, oh, thanks very much for that. That's brilliant. Great. Really appreciate it. We'll have our army back now. Um, thank you very much. And Octavian goes, oh, you're great. Thank you for your letter. Really appreciate that. No, I'm not giving the army back, actually. Um, I'm going to bring the army back to Rome and we're going to start sorting out the problems that happened with my adoptive father, Julius Caesar. So he brings his army back to Rome and he declares that those who killed Caesar are criminals and enemies of the state. And they're currently hiding out over in the east. Uh, so he raises an army and he takes it across. And at the Battle of Philippi, he defeats Brutus and Cassius, who had been responsible for the death of Julius Caesar. The Roman Senate don't quite know what to make of this whole situation. Here is this young uh, whippersnapper, uh, Octavian, who is suddenly kind of taking control and, and doing things in a way that nobody uh, thought he would. Um, so he comes back to Rome and then he meets with Mark Antony. This also nobody expected. He thought Mark Antony and Octavian were bitter enemies, but not at all. They meet together with another chap who's pictured on the coin here, uh, a guy called Marcus Lepidus, um, who's very wealthy. And as a three, they decide to form a legal triumvirate, a rule of three men to rule over the empire. Lepidus is going to look after North Africa and the western provinces. Antony is going to go over and look after Egypt and the eastern provinces. And Octavian is going to look after Italy and the centre. Now, it might seem that Octavian's getting the best deal there because he's getting Rome out of it. But actually, uh, it's worked out very cleverly. It's worked out very cleverly because there's a big problem. If you serve in the Roman army, um, you are, when you retire, entitled to a plot of land. The problem is there's a lot more people in the Roman army than there are plots of land available. And and, and uh, Octavian, in taking over control of Italy and the centre and Rome, all the rest of it, has got this problem of where to put these army veterans. He comes up with a really good solution for that, and it actually earns him enormous power within the state. One little um, byproduct um, of all of this, which is a very, very sad thing, is that... Um, uh, Antony and Octavian and Lepidus in their triumvirate want to get rid of now any of the uh, anybody who opposes them. So they sit down and they draw up lists called proscriptions. These are death lists. They're posted up and uh, these men are all executed. There are about 300 people who die as a result of these proscriptions, one of whom is Cicero, who is beheaded. His tongue is torn out and his arms, uh, his hands are nailed uh, to the door of the Senate House. This becomes a very quiet period in Roman politics because nobody he wants to stand up against Octavian and his cronies at this time, as we see the uh, ending of the Roman Republican system moving into an imperial world.